Um, and then another thing is just how you lay these projects out. Um, what we're finding is people do want to do an initial project stand-up. We'll do a proof of concept lab plus an initial pro production stand-up with a tool. Um, that's, there's some configuration in there. Um, there's an initial setup. But we like to do, do that and then have this period where there's a, a period of tailoring and refinement, uh, tailoring of workflows. Um, this period also sets up the third phase by looking at some of the uh, additional tools, things like the Bay, Bay Dynamics, uh, Cube Reporting, all that stuff, as well as um, this, uh, the, 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 the System Center Service Manager um, uh, dashboard, uh, the Provence, the, uh, the IT GRC uh, packs. And so looking at those and getting ready to uh, for extension and customization in the third phase. So we see it laying out in those three pieces. And um, uh, uh, I think it's wise to, to, to parse it out that way. Do you have thoughts on that, Pete? Yeah, I think this is a particularly good way to parse it out for the organization that's really just growing into a tool. We've seen some clients like that um, where service manager is their first real tool. They're, they're evolving out of something less sophisticated or potentially even homegrown. And I think this three-phase approach of getting the, the, uh, uh, the production environment stood up and stable then doing um, a certain set amount of tailoring and configuration to make sure that everything is working, again, toward the outcomes that we've identified, and then thinking last about extension and customization. I think that's a really good approach for that sort of organization. Yeah, and uh, I don't expect you to be able to see or read this, but I did want to make sure that you understood that one of the things with, uh, you know, this is a version 1.0 product, the documentation um, a lot of what's in, in the documentation is spread around across the documentation components as well as in the sizing tool. Some things are inconsistent, some things are, um, um, you know, in different places. So um, what the one key thing we found is to make sure you document um, your architecture, hardware software network database on one page, one sheet showing uh, the base settings. Uh, and, and not just, you know, just a simple example is, you're looking at the configuration and the sizes, they don't mention the, the self-service portal. Well, that's a box that you need. It needs to be somewhere. And also, be careful to also document the settings and the owners for the, the ancillary boxes and the platforms that are related to this. So who owns ILM or FIM for, for password reset? Who's going to do SharePoint, Share, SharePoint Site Designer for integration with the self-service portal and tailoring of that? Um, it's really key is, is for inbound and outbound notifications, IIS, SMTP, uh, Exchange, um, and then for the connectors, uh, Active Directory, and then who owns uh, SCOM and uh, SECM and what boxes are those. That's all stuff you need to know to, to properly um, configure this tool, uh, both the, the, the physical boxes and the personnel associated with who's your SQL Server uh, person. Who's going to help with uh, virtualization, with uh, provisions for fault tolerance, disaster recovery, and backup? Um, you know that those things aren't spelled out in the in the um, in the docs completely. So you want to make sure that you have a an architecture document like this, and you involve those people. Okay. So one thing we found that's key is that. Um, you carefully consider and document um, for service manager the map of your organization to service manager. Um, one thing is for installation, it, 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 we found it in practice, it's, you really got to get a table out, you really got to document carefully all the AD users and groups that you need um, for installation and ongoing operation of the tool. It, it's not exactly trivial. There's two different, a couple different places where these settings are in the um, in the tool itself, and some of the language, you know, you're left wondering, is this, is it this account, is it that account? So carefully document this so the installation, you don't have to reinstall, and for ongoing operations, things work as expected, um, and you have that for reference. I think that table of AD groups and users um, is, is key. Um, and then having an understanding of, uh, and mapping groups, queues, and views, Pete, if you want to talk to this, I think um, you know, you've got these user roles in um, 
uh, in a service manager, you've got what you've got in your organization, getting that mapping done, and then taking those user roles, looking at those. Those user roles are associated with groups using views. Understanding what those three things are and how they relate to a user role is key because otherwise uh, people won't you won't be able to relate. Uh, I'm in this service desk role, therefore when I get into the tool, I should see these not these things, not those things. So, uh, Pete, you want to talk to that one a little bit? Yeah, it's difficult in in the short time that we have to really get into these concepts. But to your earlier point. Um, these terms are not common parlance or are not going to be common parlance for most organizations. Groups are groups of configuration items. Queues are groups of work items, incidents, problems, changes in service manager. And views are, as the name suggests, what you actually see when you're in the console. And as you say, you really do need to think ahead to how do I want to group my, my CIs. Yeah. Um, how do I want to potentially group or organize and limit access to different work items? And then what do I want people to see? Uh, this is definitely one of those, particularly groups and queues, that need some advanced planning and some real thought before you dive in. Yeah. And just one other thing on these assigned related roles, very important um, to plan out and people's time and know, let them know that they need to do things on this project, um, implementation, ongoing operation. One. One, I guess, that piece of advice is the two two most uh, key roles. I guess I'd say I, uh, is the, the SQL Server administrator for sure. Um, the uh, it, the setup for notifications, inbound, outbound, email is non-trivial. So there's some some a lot of collaboration required on that, and uh, time spun up on that typically. And then the tailoring of the self-service portal, um, especially if you're going to integrate the SharePoint. Um, that's that's non-trivial. It takes some time. Those are the three that seem to be uh, the biggest. And and obviously, once you got the, the environment stood up and people want to tailor workflows, whoever's going to do that authoring is going to going to be some spending some time on that. Um, just some other quick considerations, and we'll wrap up here. Do make sure you have the latest bits. Um, there are updates. Uh, cumulative update three. You went there, and it's not just the the um, the, the core product, but it's also um, the other way that's, for example, there's an ops man management pack for this uh, thing you may not be aware of. So make sure you have the latest bits. Um, do spin up a lab and populate it with data to exercise reports. I mean, it's, it's difficult to see um, you know, the value of these things until you get a little bit of data. And typically, um, uh, the system's empty when you, when, you, when you pop it up in production. Um, you know, we got it really. We got excited about the tool because it does some very basic things. You get an instant CMDB. Uh, you get your basic incident problem uh, change and asset configuration management flows. Um, but it really starts to come alive when you look at some of these partner solutions. Um, uh, and so things like Baydynamics, their uh, their uh, cube reporting. I mean, it's like wow, it, it, the output again. Kind of getting back to you know the outcome you're looking for if it's measurement. If you're, if you're looking for improvement, if you're if you're looking for outcomes, a lot of that's found in the reporting, etc. And the the difference between the um, the canned reports, which are okay, and the this this partner solution is is, is orders of magnitude. So if you're looking for that wow factor. Look at that. Look at the Provence. Look at the other um, the ITGRC management factor of compliance. I mean, they they add a wow factor to the product that you don't want to ignore. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else here I want to emphasize. Um, yeah, oh, yes, the data warehouse registration takes a while. The connected jobs take a while to run, a lot longer than you might think, so do plan accordingly. It's, it's, it's hours and days for, for large installations, not uh, seconds and minutes. Um, and the, as I said, the inbound and outbound notifications take a while. Any, any other thoughts based on your experience, Pete? I come back to what we talked about earlier, just really being clear on outcomes, understanding that what you're trying to do here is to automate work, understand what work you're trying to automate and how things are going to be better after you automate, uh, and resist the urge to, to tinker and to play too much. I mean, it's important to get hands-on. It's important to understand how the tool works. It's important that you understand what the tool makes possible. But just because the tool makes it possible doesn't mean that you have to do it or you should do it. Keep yeah. focused on what you're really trying to accomplish. Yeah. 
Um, well, that's, that's all I have. What about you, Pete? No, that's great. I think this was, uh, this was good. So thanks, Dave. And remember, you can always learn more at Accelerate.com.